Good afternoon and welcome to Real Chicks Rock Presents Real Discussions. I'm your host, Michelle Dawes Bird, and as always, I'm super excited to be here. Today, I thought I'd give you some porch lights again. It's just beautiful weather here in Atlanta, and I wanted to take advantage of it. Thank you all, everyone, for joining in and listening to us this afternoon, and thank you so much for your support. It's just very uncertain and unique times that we're experiencing, not just here in Atlanta, not just in Georgia, but across this country and across this world. There's just so many different things that have been impacting us as just human beings. And so I just thank you for taking the time to just join us today. We want everyone to remain safe. We hope that you are. We hope that you're practicing shelter in place if you can. I know that we are slowly trying to get things back to normal. But there are some cities and some states that are observing some curfews due to some rest and rioting that's going on. We here in Atlanta, we've been doing our protesting, but it has been peaceful. And I think things are going to be are going to turn out OK. So we're just going to keep watching the news and supporting the people that are on the front lines and our essential workers that are doing everything that they can to make sure that we get the products we need each and every day. For everybody that's the first time listening and checking us out, we want to say thank you for joining us. Little background about what we are. We're all about collaborating and empowering women in what we do. And if we do it through the arts, we do it through community service, and we do it through our mentoring and public speaking. And so Real Chicks Rock is all about the embodiment and empowering women and doing things to help level the playing field and giving women the tools that they need to be able to be strategic in this world that's constantly changing. Uh, today, my guest is someone that I've had on the show previously before. I have a lot of respect for what she does and who she is and what she has done within Fulton County government. It's a very busy time here as it is uh, political season, it's voting season. A lot of people have submitted their early absentee voting. Um, people are waiting to go to the polls on Tuesday, June 9th. And so it's a lot of excitement in the air. We're going to use our vote. We're gonna use our power in voting. We're gonna activate that, that power on Tuesday. And someone that is going to be on the ballot is my guest, none other than Commissioner Natalie Hall for Fulton County District 4. Hi, Commissioner, how are you? Hello, Michelle, how are you? I'm wonderful, thank you for joining me. I know you are super busy. You're always busy, but I know it's a very critical time for you. First of all, let me ask you, how are you doing, Commissioner? How are you feeling? How are you doing? Uh, I'm doing just fine. I'm running on just pure energy. I'm just, um, I'm out here trying to serve the people, especially during this COVID-19 pandemic and uh, just doing the work up that a commissioner is supposed to be doing. Uh, yeah, you have been commissioner. We wanna say thank you. I want to ask you, how has District 4 been responding to the pandemic? How have the people been responding and holding up? Well, our seniors have been sheltering in place um, because, you know, they are the most vulnerable population. And um, it has been kind of hard for them above and beyond any other group or any other part of the population of District 4 because they rely heavily on our senior services at Fulton County where they get free transportation. They can ride Uber and Lyft for a dollar each way from and to their home. And um, they get to go to our senior centers and have a lot of fun. We have a lot of classes there, jewelry making, dance, computer classes, and, and so much more. And they get to eat breakfast and lunch. But since the pandemic, Fulton County has closed those senior centers and the majority of our buildings have been closed ever since March. And so, our constituents who are used to using our services have not had access to them the way that they are normally used to. So my team and I have actually gone out and delivered care packages to the seniors where they live in the apartment complexes, senior assisted living and high rises. And those care packages provided them with essentials that they needed like gloves and uh, hand sanitizer, toilet paper, things like that early on. And since then, we have delivered fresh fruit, uh, fruits and vegetables and anything else that we think they need. You guys have been extremely busy during this time, even though I, I know you mentioned that the, the county, the government county offices have been closed, but your team has been boots to the ground, wearing their masks, having gloves on, out connecting with the people 
people, giving them what they need, the resources that they need with your leadership. I want to say thank you for doing that because you've always had a passion and a heart for the people. And now I think we're seeing it even more. We've seen it before, Commissioner Hall, but you are really like operating at 110%. And I want to say thank you for what you're doing. Oh, thank you for that. You know, being a public servant is sometimes uh, a thankless job, but I don't do it to get any thanks or praise. I do it because it's the right thing to do. And I was always um, told that you're blessed to be a blessing to others and your blessings do not just belong to yourself. And I really believe that. And you operate in that way too, Commissioner. I wanted to take just one step back. I was so excited to have you and get going in the conversation. I do have new listeners and there are probably people who are not familiar with the government structure. So if you could just share a little bit about your background and what your responsibilities are for Fulton County District 4, that would be great. All right. So a county commissioner is, um, is there to pass legislation, of course, but we also pass over a $1.1 billion budget that supports all of our county departments, including our constitutional officers departments like the solicitor general, the DA, the public defender, the judges of superior magistrate court and uh, state court. And we have a lot of departments like our health, uh, board of health department, our, um, our um, community development department, our behavioral and developmental disabilities department, um, we, arts and culture, there are just so many things that the county does. And it's just, you know, showing how the taxpayers' dollars are being used to serve the people of the county. Um, we also passed the budget for those constitutional officers who uphold our court system. Um, and there's just so much more that we do. Awesome. So, um, Commissioner Hall, have you been able to work, I know you work, you're, you're one that likes to collaborate with other commissioners. Have the other commissioners in district, in the other districts, have you guys been able to work together more closely during this pandemic season? Oh yes, absolutely. Um, on a consistent basis, my colleagues, Commissioner Joe Carn and Commissioner Marvin Arrington Jr. and Commissioner Liz Hausman have consistently been um, supportive and creating resolutions together and sponsoring, co-sponsoring each other's resolutions and um, just to make sure that we're covering everything that our constituents need, especially during this COVID-19 pandemic. So, but even before we did work together and, uh, but I, I expand beyond that because my district is unique because it's entirely inside of the city of Atlanta so I have over a dozen Atlanta City Council members whose districts are inside of my district, as well as several Atlanta public school reps, um, two senators, the congressman, Congressman Lewis. And um, so there are a lot of elected officials from other jurisdictions that have districts inside of my district. And I work with all of them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So because you're out, uh, Commissioner Hall, working so closely with the people and working with other members, uh, not only in Atlanta, but in other districts, was there any concerns that you heard from the people? Was there anything that was resonating no matter where you were? Was there any concerns that people were having during this time that you heard? Elections. Elections. Yeah. That is the number one biggest concern right now is the elections because you know, because of COVID-19, the absentee ballot became prevalent as far as what people needed to use to vote. Because right. we were thinking that people were not going to be able to go to the polls. We didn't know how this was going to play out with COVID-19 and the spread of it. So the absentee ballot request forms were sent to all voters and everyone sent them back requesting the absentee ballot be sent to them. Unfortunately, what I found out was that the ballots were being sent from Arizona and they were taking up to three to four weeks for people to receive them. So you could imagine those people who waited a little longer to turn in their absentee ballot request form are really nervous right now because they have not received those absentee ballots yet to actually vote. So a lot of people 
have actually just decided to go to the polls and vote during early voting, which were the past two weeks. Um, the last day of early voting ended on Friday, June 5th. So it, there was a flood of people and it was, it was very aggravating for everyone because number one, we still have to social distance. So we have to keep everyone six feet apart. So you can imagine if you have a hundred people in line and they have to stand six feet apart, that line is gonna wrap all the way around the building and down the sidewalk. So we experienced that as well as the heat has been really bad. It's been over 80 degrees most days. And, um, and then we started off with very small rooms with the machines in them because we didn't expect that so many people were gonna actually come out because of COVID-19, but they did. So we've had long lines, long waits. I, I was just told that there were some places that waited four hours to vote. And uh, we, until late in the, I think someone said two in the morning or something like that. And so voting has been the most critical issue right now because, you know, the primary election is this Tuesday, June 9th. And for those people who did not early vote or who did not um, get their absentee ballot, they're going to have to go to the polling locations on Tuesday. And although there are more polling locations open on Tuesday, we are still missing quite a few because there are locations that have refused to open due to COVID-19 and they have every right to do that. Hmm. So um, it's gonna be a really interesting election day on Tuesday. Yeah, I can already see it brewing already. Four hours waiting to vote, that's the commitment. I think the last time we saw that level of commitment was when Obama was re running for president Absolutely. of the United States. Absolutely, yes, yes. And voting is even more important than ever before because of what happened with George Floyd yes. and Ahmaud, you know, the protests have proven that um, people are watching and they're aware of what's going on and they don't like it. Mm -hmm. And because the laws, I mean, to find out that Georgia doesn't even have a hate crime law was just disheartening. Mm -hmm. So we're at a point where even the young people are realizing, yes, you need to start voting. Every vote counts. And it really counts when it comes to electing the right people to represent you. Mm -hmm. You want the people that are going to actually create the laws that protect you and that help you. And so there were there are a lot of young people walking around with signs now that say, you know, vote. And so I think we're going to see some um, serious numbers at the polls. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree, Commissioner Hall. I think that we can never take our foot off the gas when it comes to voting. Uh, I think some terms or some elections or some primaries we feel we don't have to go, it's not as important. And I say a collective, we just people across the United States, definitely from, it varies from state to state, city to city. But I think just the criticality of human welfare and how we are and our health and just making sure laws are in place to, to support us. I really believe, it's just a personal belief, Commissioner Hall, that yes, this pandemic, this COVID-19 pandemic was something that we did not want, but I do believe that it is going to allow us to be more cognizant of what's going on. I believe that change is going to happen at a community level. That's why I think Tuesday, this Tuesday, June 9th, is extremely important for people to go out and vote, to cast their vote and not wait for another time or not wait for just for the presidential election, but to you have an opportunity to vote at your local level, you need to get out there and vote. So I'm asking everybody to do that and I know that they will. I wanted to ask you, Commissioner Hall, do you, I know we're still in the midst of the changing of times, right? Yeah. And so I wanted to get your viewpoint. Do you have any feeling as to what you think the new normal might be for your district? What do you think might be the new normal? Or it's not going to gonna just be for my district. It's going to be for the world because I think that what's going to happen is we're going to have to continue to wear masks and social distance yes. and you know protect ourselves because we don't know exactly what's going to have it happen with the COVID nineteen virus and you know they keep saying that that this thing is going. To, uh oh, sorry. No, you're fine. I think my, my screen just did something a little crazy. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. 
Okay, so I think that um, it's going to be the norm for a little while right now to wear the mask and everything mm -hmm. um, because of the fact that they keep saying there's going to be a surge again in the fall. Right. And so I think everybody's just bracing themselves to see. And then with the protests and everything, it has brought people back together in close proximity to each other, um, protesting. And um, I was told the other day that the, um, the New England uh, Patriot pro athlete who went to one of the protests recently mm -hmm. tested positive for COVID. And he said that he believes that he got it from going to the protest. So I think that, um, you know, breaking that social distancing rule is probably going to show us, you know, how is this COVID-19 virus going to actually react to everybody emerging back together? Yeah. And, and the thing is, uh, Commissioner Hall, we're not sure if it's going to have the same force and same of vengeance or if it'll be a little milder. We have, the thing is, none of us, we don't have any idea how this is going to hit us. And you're right, we're just trying to bear and buckle down, embrace ourselves, because we know it's going to happen again. Um, you have been out, Commissioner Hall, really on the front lines, even with the testing. I wanted to talk to you about that. I think that's a tremendous um, accomplishment, just being aware and, and encouraging people to get tested. You've been at some, some facilities where the testing was introduced and offered uh, available to people to be tested free, correct, Commissioner? Yes, Fulton County had, you know, testing sites immediately with COVID-19, but we didn't have enough. Mm -hmm. And so we expanded to add additional COVID-19 testing sites. And one of them happened to be in downtown, um, which is part of my district. My chief of staff and I went by to see the actual testing site once it was set up and to literally experience it so that we could also be able to speak to how it goes, how the process is, what it feels like and everything. And, um, you know, I had heard so many horror stories about the testing from even my own team member who was tested um, early on. And she talked about how there was this extra long um, Q-tip. And she said, it literally felt like the Q-tip went all the way down your throat and into your brain. It was that long and it was so um, irritating and painful. Well, the new test, you use a regular sized Q-tip and they actually hand it to you and you swab inside of your nose yourself. And there's no pain. It doesn't go all the way down the back of your, um, your path, nasal passage or anything like that. It's a very simple and painless process. And our testing sites, are free to the public. They can walk up um, during the hours and they don't have to have a doctor's note or anything like that. They don't even have to have an appointment and they just walk up and get set up and test for free. Mm -hmm. You think we should all go and get tested, Commissioner Hall? Yes, because I think it's important for us. You know how they keep saying, now we have to do more contact tracing to see how where the virus is moving and how it's moving through our our neighborhoods and our cities and our, our states. Well, the only way for us to do contact tracing is to test everyone and see who actually tests positive for the virus. And then this also gives us more record of symptoms that people are experiencing. And also if um, they are not experiencing any symptoms, because as we have heard, there are people who are actually like carriers, they carry the virus, but they have no symptoms whatsoever. So they are able to pass the virus to other people when they don't even have any symptoms. Amazing, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna really think about getting tested sooner than later, especially before the, uh, the next wave hits yeah. us. Um, Commissioner, I wanna talk about the fact that you are running for reelection for District 4. As the existing commissioner, please share with us, if you mind, if you don't mind, some of your accomplishments that you've done while you've been in the office, while you've been in the position. All right. Um, early on, I was uh, disturbed by the fact that everywhere I went, um, any meeting that I was in that was health related, they were talking about how Fulton County was number one in new cases of HIV/AIDS, 
And, and I, I want to start with that because, you know, with COVID-19 being on the forefront of the news, we're still forgetting about all these other things that we need to deal with that we have been dealing with. And, and HIV AIDS is one of them. Um, you know, they were saying that we were number one in new cases. And so I asked the, our director of Board of Health, so what do we need to do to try to help this situation, to try to stop that from happening? And she said there needs to be more testing and treatment and education and that there was a need for nurses and nurse practitioners. And um, I said, you know, we need to take this, the testing to the community. And they said, absolutely, we need to start a new campaign to and buy mobile units and go out to the community and test people and treat them and educate them right on the spot. So I actually requested over $670,000 to specifically be used for HIV AIDS testing, treatment, and education. And that helped them start a campaign called hashtag stop HIV ATL. And there was the purchase of several mobile units and those mobile units were going around to all of the neighborhoods, testing and treating people and educating them on how to, if you have it, how to not spread it. If you don't have it, how to prevent yourself and, and uh, your partner from getting it. And, um, and it just worked out really well. But in addition to that, our senior population, I was told, was is the fasting growest population in the United States. Hmm. And so Fulton County is known for our Department of Senior Services and all the outstanding programs and services we have for our seniors. So I allocated $1.2 million directly to senior services so that they could have more free, free transportation because there was a backlog and a waiting list for seniors to get their transportation available to them. And we added Uber and Lyft so that they can ride one for $1 each way from their home to wherever they need to go, whether it be the grocery store, the doctor, or wherever they need to go. And um, also for more minor home repairs, home delivered meals, classes at their senior centers, the renovation and upkeep of the senior centers, and so much more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You've done a, a lot of great things, Commissioner. And I can keep going and going, but, I, but my team is trained me. Don't keep going, you just okay. keep talking. <laughs> I, 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 I totally understand. And that's a good problem to have, have a long list of accomplishments during your time in the position. Um, I wanted to ask you, if reelected, what is one of the first things you, you want to do once you're re if reelected in the position of commissioner? Um, well, I have a lot of things that are already going on that I will just continue. It's not like I stop working just to run. I'm still working as the commissioner as I run for reelection. So it's not a matter of what am I going to start doing once I'm elected. It's you know I have a pre-arrest diversion task force that um, we were not able to meet because of COVID-19 because it's so many people, probably at least over 50 people who attend from Atlanta Police Department, Sheriff's Department, Corrections Department, the judges at Superior Magistrate Court, the Solicitor General, the County Manager and his executive team, neighborhood um, association presidents and so many more people. But we come together because I was contacted by Moki, who is the executive director of the Atlanta Fulton Pre-Arrest Diversion Initiative, and she told me that the numbers were extremely low, that they should be receiving more people into their program off of the streets to be diverted away from jail and into wraparound services to help them become more successful, especially our homeless population that we see growing under the bridges where we see the tent city starting to become a reality around our city. And so we started this task force to, de to determine what's broken, how do we fix it, and how do we move forward in a better manner to get more people diverted and more people on a pathway to success. A lot of good things going on there, Commissioner. Thank you for that. Um, just so much change and things that are going on. What else would you like to see? What is your hope for Fulton County District 4? What would you like to see for your, for, for your district? I would like to see our neighborhoods west of the Mercedes-Benz Stadium redeveloped in a manner that does not displace the seniors and the legacy residents that have lived there for decades. 
I want to see them have the grocery stores that they need and all the essential types of, of stores and, and businesses that they need so that their communities can be vibrant just like downtown and just like northeast of the city, Old Fourth Ward, Inman Park, and all those surrounding neighborhoods. I want to see the development done in a better manner that doesn't displace the people. And I know that we can do that. We have a lot of great developers who specifically do affordable housing. And I see them on the west side doing a lot of new developments, buying up some of the old apartment buildings and, and renovating them and reopening them as affordable apartments and housing. And so I really think that this time around, we can really make Atlanta a place for everyone to live. Mm -hmm. It is. Atlanta is a beautiful city. Uh, oftentimes when people come visit here, they don't want to go back. Uh, we just want to make sure that the existing residents here are taken care of as well as there's opportunities for new people that want to come into our city. Uh, Fulton County is one of the biggest counties. You're busy, Commissioner Hall. You have your hands full because your, your territory just is pretty big and it spans a lot of streets in, in the city of Atlanta. And so, you know, I wish you all the best. I wish you well in everything that you do. I want you to give us a little bit of hope as we go out to the polls this Tuesday, June 9th. What can we expect? Long lines? Some of the polls will be open up early. Will they open up late? Any indication on what you think is going to happen for us on Tuesday? Yes, the polling locations are going to be open from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. I would tell everyone to go early because it's probably going to be hot. You don't want to be out there during the midday standing in the sun. Take lots of water. Take a seat with you. Um, we are trying to have um, chairs for the people who may have to wait in line. Seniors, go straight to the front of the line and get inside the building and vote. You have that opportunity to do that. We made the way for the seniors to go and jump ahead in the line. And I would just say, you know, try to get there as early as possible. I have a feeling there are going to be a lot of people there before the doors even open. Yeah, exactly. So I wish you all the best, Commissioner Hall. How can people find you? I know you're on social media. You posting pictures. You're giving us positive affirmations, telling us things that we need to be aware of. How can the people find you? I'm on all the social media, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. I have my Fulton County Commissioner Natalie Hall pages. I have my Natalie W. Hall pages. Um, they can find me on Fulton County's website as their official commissioner of District 4 at FultonCountyGA.gov. I have a Fulton County page called Fulton County GA, the number four, dot com. And I have my campaign website, NatalieWHall.com. And you can always call my office at 404-612-8226. Please leave a voicemail because your voicemail will actually turn into an email and it will email myself and my team so that we can respond to you. Because remember, right now we are still closed due to COVID-19. We have not even reopened the county government center. We're looking at doing that around mid-June, but we're still not going to be fully staffed up because we're trying to make sure that we keep every one state safe, not only our employees, but the constituents that utilize our services. It's a very important and critical time for all of us as we begin to re-entry back into our businesses. Um, corporations are doing the same. It's a gingerly slow process essential people will probably go back into the facilities first and there could be a potential maybe a week or two lag before the next wave of people that go in. So I think that what the county is doing is very smart, very strategic, because this way you can monitor and keep a close eye on what's going on and what's working and what's not and can make changes as you need to so that everyone can be safe as we continue to move forward. Commissioner Hall, you know how I feel about you. Thank you so much for your time today. I mean, you're so dedicated. You're talking to me on the road as you are out here campaigning and talking to the people and giving them what they need and yeah. want. Thank you. <laughs> no, thank you, Michelle, for inviting me on the show to speak to the people and to just share information that may help them during this COVID-19 pandemic. I really appreciate you. Yes, thank you so much. And you guys know me. You know you can reach me and find me anywhere, but today's 
show was powered by the t-shirt lady yes 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 it is not summertime yet but the weather is warm as commissioner hall has mentioned you need your t-shirts virtual family reunions are taking place people have graduated father's day is coming up you know you need those t-shirts for the summer this is a black owned and op business in the city of Atlanta, East Atlanta to be exact. The work is phenomenal. The colors are bright and she is legacy building because she has incorporated her son into her business. So it's the t-shirt lady and son currently accepting online orders and available for store pickup and for shipping. Please go to her website, the t-shirt lady.com and place your order today. You can get that order fulfilled and have your merchandise picked up by at the store. So guys, you know me, that's my time. I want you guys to continue to remain safe, stay healthy. We need you. We need you more than never now. We want you to be well in everything that you do. We want you to be strategic. Think about the things that you're doing. If you save up any energy, we want you to go out and vote this Tuesday, Tuesday, June 9th. Polls open at 7 a.m. We want you in the place if you've not uh, voted already, your vote matters, your vote counts. You can find me everywhere. I'm on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Feel free to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hey, we're selling t-shirts too, so go to the website and cop that t-shirt for yourself. Until next time, you guys be well. Take care and continue to rock on. Bye. 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 <laughs>